known for his creativity in the film and theater industry, and the other is known for no air. Now, if you're thinking of EGOT winner Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown, well, no, not them. Mike Nichols is a theater director and entertainment critic from upstate New York, and Chris Brown is the host of the online show Cross Border Interviews, who wants to announce right here, right now, that Rolling Stones can go kiss my Canadian ass as Martin Short is one of the funniest comedians out there today. Either way, together, Mike Nichols and Chris Brown talk about the entertainment industry as only two people who aren't the people you're thinking about only can. This is, no, not them. Michael, long time no talk. We need to unpack that whole opening monologue you just gave us first of all i didn't know chris brown sang no air i thought it was jordan sparks both of them oh i'm so used to the glee version because i am the problem so i'm like it's jordan sparks song (laughs) it's jordan sparks and chris brown no it's jordan sparks song (laughs) um also that was a lot of hostility towards one rolling stones and i know nothing about what this hostility is but that so was like early, earlier this month, uh, I think it was either Rolling Stones. I feel bad if it wasn't Rolling Stones now. But earlier this month, Rolling Stones came out an art, with an article basically lambasting uh, Martin Short, the author of the person, basically said, we didn't understand uh, why people thought Mike Martin Short was so funny. And then every Canadian out of the woodworks came out in support of uh, Martin Short. And basically every comedian, comedic actor came out in support of Martin Short as well. Um, I think he's hilarious. I think he's been fucking amazing since SCTV, since Father of the Bride, now in Only Murders in the Building, which we're not talking about because I've not seen the final episode, which came out uh, a few days ago. So it's variety, isn't it? It's the slate. Yeah, Rolling Stone, slate, same thing. <laughs> I mean, that was like a lot of energy towards <laughs> the Rolling Stone magazine. Well, sorry. Well, the slate can go shove it up their fucking asses. <laughs> okay, because Martin Short is a Canadian treasure, and anyone who comes for him comes for all of Canada, and we know how to hold our maple syrup, so try to have pancakes without maple syrup. <laughs> Unhinged. Right off the bat, going in. Happy insert day you're listening here to that. Happy, but how are you? How's life? How's liberty? How's the pursuit of happiness over in the great state of New York, New York? I may have flown a bit too close to the sun theatrically, as I am currently directing two shows, and I want to die. I didn't know you were directing two. I thought you were only directing one. Nope, two. I'm directing Rabbit Hole, and I'm directing a Halloween themed cabaret. I it's knew one that. that I, it's one that I did last year that my friend Nicole was like, wouldn't this be fun if we direct it together? Because she is also directing Adam's Family, the musical. So we're both directing our own show. And they're like, oh, my God, let's do this fun thing together. It'll be great. Um, it's 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 not. Um, I want to die. Uh, it is too much work. It is too many days of rehearsal. And um, I'm behind on my reading goal by a lot because uh, I come home and I just want to go to bed. I, I think the so I was recently just at a conference and a few people came up to me and were talking about this show with me and at a municipal conference to boot. And they said that I'm usually the one who's always down and depressed and you're the one who's usually always cheerful. So not today. Uh, <laughs> Surprise. She's on death's door. <laughs> and usually that's Chris. Um, so it sounds like you've been busy. And when we were going through the list of topics we were going to discuss today, uh, we both kind of looked at each other and said, do you know this story? I don't know this story. Do you know this story? No, I don't know this story. So it's going to be an interesting next hour as we try to dissect the entertainment industry as only two people who aren't the people you're thinking about only can. So with that, I want to start with the kind of the big uh, sort of not big news, but the uh, News that's been on almost all of social media's mouths these days. Taylor Swift in an alleged relationship with a Kansas Chief tight end football star Yay kicker. Is. What? Yeah, he is. 
Yeah. Um, so there's an alleged relationship here. And it seems like uh, after she showed up to the first game, publicly was there with her mother, um, his jerseys uh, shot through the roof, 400% increase of sales on his jersey sales alone. This is the Taylor Swift uh, factor that we are seeing going on in this country, right? In this, well, this world right now, where she touches something and it becomes a massive thing. Um, do you th- what do you make of this? Because I, I'm looking at this and saying, okay, is this just for the next album? Is this an actual relationship? I don't know. I can't with you. I cannot. Um, I don't know anything about um a football. Um, I Go know that sports. she has rah rah rah. Um, she has been there. She has been seen. Um, my TikTok is all a flutter with Taylor Swift, uh, being there, and now everybody suddenly be caring about the Chiefs. Um rock on party hard uh it's funny that at least what people are doing with it but at the same time it's like let this poor woman she let her have her man oh, she's hanging it, out with what's she was hanging out with what's her name the Brittany mahomes of, i don't know she was hanging out with one of the owners of the chiefs too so it's like oh okay she's also hanging out with lots of other folk taylor swift been in the news a lot um, I would actually pay money. I would pay the price of an era's ticket to never hear about Taylor Swift again. Um, uh, come for me. Come for me. Usually I'm the one who's causing controversy on this show. It seems like mischief just... mayhem madness. This is what's going on in the world right now. Mischief mayhem madness. Um, so is this the Oprah effect? And I, I was kind of thinking about this last week. So w- during the Christmas time, Oprah had would would have like Oprah's favorite, big things. favorite things, and they would shoot through the roof. When Oprah did the book club, and she plastered Oprah's pick on the front uh, cover of a book, it shot through the roof. Is this what just is this sort of the new era of Oprah's favorite things? But it's now Taylor Swift's things. I guess. I mean. I, I I mean we'll see how long it lasts. Her average relationships tend to Her last not... one was like five years, right? Yeah, she was I think engaged or something, but she dates a lot of folks briefly. Sometimes they make an album, sometimes they don't. Like whatever. Celebrities do what celebrities do. Um I hope And at the I same time, nothing... there's probably men out there who are probably fucking around left, right, and center. So it's not like I can say that fucking exactly. Taylor Swift is doing something wrong because she's really not. She's literally dating people. And it's just because she's in the news so often and because like literally the Wall Street Journal has a dedicated journalist now just to Taylor Swift. That's too much. We we all need to calm down. Taylor Swift is fine. She's fine. But like a dedicated journalist for Taylor Swift, we all need to stop. We all need to check our priorities. We all need to check ourselves into like a Taylor Swift program and like relax a little she's fine the girl is fine she's not sending you secret messages in her instagram captions she's not beaming you messages y'all gotta stop but taylor swift plays into it and so like she knows what she's doing she is a capitalist through and through oh and she's making money right like she's she's a capitalist she's a capitalist first Oh, and all all artists are at the end of the day, right? All artists oh, want to do is make money. Sense. Well, at the end of the day, everyone's a capitalist at heart, right? Everyone wants to make money. Everyone wants to sort of be in a good position where they don't have to uh, work for a large portion of time. They want to retire early. And I think a lot of people are capitalists at the end of the day. Are we? Are, this, this is not a political show, Michael. This is- I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just saying. This is economics. This isn't political. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. And this is why the states <laughs> are going through a speaker race right now because we don't know what economics are. <laughs> uh, the difference, I think, between the average person and Taylor Swift is we're not releasing 45 albums, versions of the same album with the expectation our fans need to buy all of them to complete the fucking mosaic of Taylor Swift's face that maybe makes a clock if you look at it with your eyes squinted really tightly. You had to buy four versions of Midnight's as a record to form the Taylor Swift 
midnight's clock, which could be a functioning clock, you'd buy four of the record. Four. One, two, three, four. That is like, mm -mm. I'm, I'm, you know what, capitalism thing, whatever, like economic, sure. But ma'am, but then her fans did it. So like, can I blame her? No. If the demand's not there, then I'm on a tangent. I'm sorry. I'm like fired up. I am. Mm, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm just going to put this out there right now. At the beginning of the uh, show, before we hit the record button, we said, do I want to talk about Taylor Swift? And Michael said, no, it's okay. There's not much to talk about. And he just went on a three minute rant about the Taylor Swift clock. <laughs> I, I, I'm still, listen, I think I've talked about this goddamn clock many times in many locations across the universe. I, this clock and me, we got beef. We got beef, it cannot be squashed. <laughs> and no, we don't have beef because I want it. We just got beef. I said what I said. You said what you said. I said what I said. Get my wife's out of your name out of your mouth. Um, so I think we've taken way too much time on Taylor Swift right now. <laughs> so we're gonna move into another era that I era. I Triggered! <laughs> we're gonna move into another segment now and it's about two people i didn't really know they were dating i didn't know that they were even engaged i didn't even know they had kids until uh michael said that the names of the kids were released by the judge in the divorce proceedings kevin jonas or joe jonas joseph or, jonas or nick jonas <laughs> joseph jonas okay joe jonas and sophia laron Sophie Turner, Game of Thrones, baby. That means nothing to me. Okay, you saved yourself trauma. I heard Not watching like, it. Um, but they kind of I, I guess I can't it's say messy. kind of it it is. And it's getting to the point where kids have been taken from one place, one country to another, and kept there. And then I others... mean, I guess Florida's a new country. No, but weren't they in <laughs> You are on fire today. Are you? No. <laughs> so they are, were in New York. You're sleep Joe... deprived, aren't you? <laughs> Baby, what is sleep? Okay, I don't anyway. know what's happening. I'm unhinged today and I'm very sorry. Um, uh, this is going to be a great edit. No, uh, this is going to be fin edit. Blame who? it on the edit. Uh, no, this is all me. There's no edit to blame it on. So anyways, Sophie Loren and the Joe Jonas. Turner. Turner. <laughs> Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner, Joe Jonas, match made in heaven. They deprived us of all the information on their public life, which is weird for celebrities, especially celebrity couples, because a lot of times they get together with the intent exclusively to be like in the media and flashed across the headlines. And they were like, oh, fuck you. Like they announced they were married. Like, a year and a half after they were married on Instagram with like a subtle, like, look at my ring. And it wasn't even like a, oh, ha ha, look at my ring. It was, I'm holding flowers and my ring's there. And like, that was the indication that like, talk about actually delivering hidden clues in the captions, not Taylor Swift, it's Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas. Well, their marriage crumbled rapidly because Sophie wanted to live in London okay. and raise the kids in London. And because Joseph that's where she's from, right? Yeah, and Joe was like, oh yeah, that's totally fine. But then suddenly was like, mm, no, that's not totally fine. And wanted Miss Sophie Turner, wanted her to be a traveling on the road Joe Jonas wife, like Kevin's wife and like Priyanka sometimes, like wanted completely like different things and was basically like sacrifice your career to come be like a traveling wife. And Sophie was like, mm, no. Uh, and they just fell apart. It just fell apart and it's very sad. And Sophie is trying was trying to just get custody. But like Taylor Swift told us who this man was. She dated him. She wrote a plethora of songs. He broke up with her over not Instagram, it text message, a phone call, something, broke up with her. And like she wrote like a hundred songs about him, about how he ain't shit. We are a Sophie Turner household, period. Just don't ask my husband because he thinks Joe Jonas is attractive. And so he'll say we're Joe Jonas. No, we're Sophie Turner household. 
it's ironic that you're a Sophie Turner household, which in essence is a Taylor Swift household. Because no, but they're like best friends now. They're partying together. It's like, look at Joe's exes. Ooh, 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 ooh. And I'm like, you know what? Pop off, sis. Um, pop off. The Jonas are kind of they they had a brief hiatus where they weren't really doing much, and they're kind of getting back into the swing of things because the other yeah. brother has a TV show too now, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has related like, to or something like that shit. Yeah, where, Tom like, Hanks's cousin had a whole ass meltdown because she went home first. Yeah, and then like Elton John's nephew cousin or whatever you want to call it or something. I don't know. It always pops up on my freaking Facebook. I'm like, what the? I don't want to. Who are you people? Stop. That's it. the question. That's the show. <laughs> I know, but stop it. I don't want. I don't care who you well, are. Okay. The I Jonas really Brothers care. went. <laughs> The Jonas Brothers went away, though, because Nick was like, fuck y'all, y'all ain't shit, and went and had a solo career. And didn't do well, though, did he? No, it did well. Why is he back with the brothers, then? <laughs> because there's more money in a reunion tour and coming back together. Oh, is there? Of course. I thought he came back because Harry Styles was the new it thing in America. Who? Oh, is he not the thing anymore? Who? Harry Styles. I don't know her. I'm sorry. Taylor Swift's ex-boyfriend, Harry Styles. Better? Oh, seems like, ain't seems, shit. <laughs> seems like you know a lot about Taylor Swift for someone who has Listen, issues with Taylor Swift. <laughs> I hate her. She's all over me. I don't know how I ended up on Taylor Swift TikTok, but now I can dissect Taylor Swift's entire dating history because these people on the TikTok are all like, d -d 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 with the clues. And did, the did Harry Styles and her actually date? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought that was just a joke that I made. <laughs> no, they did it. That's who the, the song Style is about, which if you listen <laughs> a minute, whatever, you, I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't. And they suck me in because I'm like lying in bed and I'm like, oh, this is really fascinating. I'm from an anthropological standpoint. This is so interesting. But then I'm like, oh my God, now I can't get it off my TikTok. Because the algorithm, blame it on the I algorithm. It. I hate it. That yeah, I will blame it, it on the algorithm. <laughs> Uh, we want to talk about kind of the big news that happened at the end of September. The writer's strike of uh, America ended. Uh, while one is officially over, one is still going on. One strike that is still going on is the SAG-ACTRA strike that is still going on. Now, I had the chance to sit down with Rob Cohen, uh, the uh, writer and director in Hollywood who was born in Calgary. We released it uh, under the CBI Signature Series. Uh, during that interview, he said that if they got a deal done by the end of that week, which it literally happened, they'd expect new shows to potentially start up if the actors come back by middle of October to start back up potentially, potentially by November, December. So we could be seeing some new uh, shows, new episodes, probably by February of next year. So it might be a reduced uh, season like every other writer's strike. But he he is optimistic that since the writers are back, they're probably going to start writing new shows, starting to get things in the bank. So that way, when the writer or the actors do actually go back, it, they're going to go back full force. Yeah. The issue I have when he said that, and I didn't want to say it on there because I respected him and I respected that he gave time at his busy schedule to uh, sit there and uh, chat with me, is the writers wanted the actors to strike with them, and they did. Then they went on strike. The actors. Now that the writers are back, the actors are still out and the writers are all going back to work. So my my thought process here is, why aren't you showing solidarity that you want it from the actors when they were when you were on strike in May and then not until June did you actually go on strike? It's very confusing to me that the writers are back, which is great. I'm happy. I'm happy they're getting, they got a fair deal. I'm happy they got what they wanted with the artificial intelligence issues. My issue is stand in solidarity. That's what unions are for, to stand in solidarity with your brothers and sisters. So what's your take on this? Um, I don't know. I feel like there was are you, still- are, are you shocked that it took so long? May to September, five months of negotiations. Are you shocked that it took that long? No, I'm actually kind of shocked that it ended so early. I thought it was going to go longer. Um, which means that the writing on the wall was going quicker because the actors were also out. And I think that they're going to probably 
I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen with the actors. The, I think by October, it's a very optimistic thing. Because uh, at this point, like, the scabbing is so low and people are so, like, against it. There is a lot of shit, though, too, for the American Horror Story was fully scabbed. That's all scabs. Y'all are willingly watching a show based on people writing that we're not, that we're basically going and writing without permission of the strike and acting without permission of the strike. Uh, I just, I'm curious. I'm curious what happens from this. I don't, I think, I don't know. I'm just very curious. Maybe Taylor Swift needs to get in there and fix the issue because it seems like she fixes everything else. But so you, you don't you you don't think it's going to happen as quick with the actors as it did with the writers in the last few weeks, do you? I think it's going to be December, or January. Well, that's what you said about the writer strike. So let's prove Michael wrong, everyone. For those who are listening in Hollywood, let's prove Michael wrong and let's get the actors back because uh, I think they'll probably need it. But. I don't anticipate them going back as soon as possible. I think it's going to be middle of October by the time they get a fair deal. Now that the studios just have to deal with one union instead of being split into two, they're going to be able to focus all their energy. So I know they are meeting this week as we're recording this. I think they're going into their first day of three days of uh, negotiation. So we will see. On that note, though, I want to pick up on a story that we didn't talk about last month, but I want to talk about it this month, and I kind of wanted to get your opinion. Now, Drew Barrymore, during the height of the beginning of September, said she was going to come back with her show because she had people working for her, and they wanted to be, they wanted work, and they needed to get paid. So she had set that she was going to come back, and she was going to come back full force. A lot of people were angry about this. A lot of people were upset about this. A lot of people were saying, Drew Barrymore, how can you sort of... Uh, reject everything that the writers are trying to achieve here by you just going back and doing your daytime talk show which i don't even know who watches it because i talk to people and no one knows that drew barrymore has a fucking talk daytime talk show but that's here nor there then bill maher from real talk with bill maher decided to come back within the same week and then within the like a week of backlash of people saying don't do this you can't you're destroying the unions you're destroying everything that we're working towards Drew Barrymore and Bill Maher said, "How hey, we're not going to do it. We understand how much harm and sorry, uh, how much harm we caused you, and thoughts and prayers with everyone who's still on the union line." Um, do you think people are going to be lining up to go uh, on the, the Drew Barrymore show there, Michael? With everything yes. that she put, really. So this is the thing. That the was a very long can... question. To you, just give me a one-word answer. So I'm very impressed that you're going to give me a long answer about how Taylor Swift is involved here. No, I was just about to give you more. You, you cut me off. <laughs> Shocker. Um, so yes, I I think that your people are going to still be going back to it. This is the big thing with it. In her apology, she said. You know, she made the decision based on folks that she had around her saying that they wanted to go back and they wanted to do this. And like, she was trying to be supportive. But then she immediately upon the internet being like, yo, Drew Barrymore, what the fuck is this? She changed her mind and moved forward with not reopening. And that's the big thing. Like, we have to give people the ability to, with when presented with information, change their decision. Okay. And we have to still support them. And I'm a big proponent of that, especially with something like this. It was, hey, I'm going to do this to support my people. And then everyone, all the unions were like, we understand that, but don't support your people by fucking us over. And then she said, you're right. I'm going to apologize for even thinking that that was helpful and, and donate money. And that, like, that's what we have to see more of and giving people the allowance to fuck up. We're not perfect beings. We're going to fuck up. And we have to allow for apologies to actually mean something. And she did what she said and she showed what she did. And I still support her. 
Okay. Well, it, it, it's in the same vein that uh, Jimmy Fallon, Seth Meyer, Jimmy Kimmel, and Stephen Colbert had, mm-hmm. and John Oliver had their Strike Force Five. They did a podcast where they raised money to pay their workers who were on who weren't on strike but were sort of left out in the wilderness because yeah. they weren't getting paid. So there were celebrities who were actually doing the good thing and actually trying to pay their people. And some, I think, Jimmy Kimmel actually was paying out of his own pocket to actually uh, pay his uh, staff members who weren't on strike. Yeah. Um, I, I agree that you need to give people the benefit of the doubt that things change and people's uh, reasoning for doing things are different. Uh, it sounded like there was a lot of backlash though. And I'm not sure if she did it because of the backlash or if she did it because she was honestly, sincerely regretful for trying to make it uh, about her people. I don't know, but we will see. We well, that's the say. thing. We only have the information we have, and There's going based three on sides of the stories, right? Mm-hmm. And going based on the information we have, which is her apology and her reasoning behind it, we have to kind of take that at face value. I like agree. we don't have, we're not there in the background going, "Oh my God, she was totally making doing it to just make money." Drew Barrymore don't need make, don't need to make money. She's fine. She's thriving. Like her writers and her her tech people and her crew, etc. Maybe they need to make money. So I get where she's coming from with it. It was just the wrong way to do it. She also wasn't oh, wasn't classifying as a talk show. She was cast classifying as like a news channel, which was funky. It's just like, she, I, cause, and that's where I kind of believe what she's saying. Cause she could have just said, no, we're a talk show. I'm going to hire my writers, whatever. Was the view not on this entire time though? No, the view has been on this entire time. That's what I thought. And they're they don't consider themselves the news channel. They yes, they do. Themselves. What? Mm-hmm. D- did I hear correctly? I think it was either you or somebody else I was speaking to. The View is one of the most watched daytime talk shows in uh, America right now. That wasn't me, but yes. Really, people actually yeah. tune in and listen to that stuff. A hundred percent. I, I'm not like I, I'm just flabbergasted. I thought it was just like one of those like Regis and Kelly's things that like people used to turn into, but they don't do it anymore. No, the view is very well watched. Hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like we, she was seeing the view do it, and she was seeing all these other people do it that are basically the same thing that are classifying as morning news or news whatever. I I would probably do the same thing to pay my people if I and she's a very care and you can tell in the interview she does at least the persona she gives to the world is very caring. I could totally believe her being like, yeah, I wanted to get my people paid, but I also now see that this was harmful, so we're not going to do it, and I'm going to look at other. But like, I don't know. It's it's tricky. It's a tricky world. It certainly is, but it got trickier for one other person uh as well two other people earlier this month as well who had to come out and publicly apologize for something they did in the month of september uh ashton kutcher and mila kunis uh wrote uh letters to the judge uh for the danny matherson case who was just sentenced to 30 years in prison for rape uh the that 70s show star danny matherson uh was going through a pretty under sort of the radar uh, court trial. Like there didn't seem to be that much uh, headlines across the nation about this, but most, I, I say this Keely, most of his, that 70s show uh, co-stars came out in support of Danny, not getting jail time. One in particularly didn't. And I want to talk about that for a second here, before we talk about the apology, non-apology that Ashton and Mila gave. Um, Michael, were you yes. shocked that this the kind of the main actor on that 70s show did not come out in support of this uh atrocious act that Danny Matherson did? Oh, Topher Grace is fabulous. He basically, the minute everything came out, was like, I don't know that guy. I don't know anything about him. I don't know his life. I don't know his story. I, he's nobody to me. Like immediately was like dead to me. And we're like, you know what, Topher Grace? You're all right. You are all fucking right. I'm a huge fan. He, do you think his star grew a little bit brighter after it was found out that he was one of the only ones that actually came didn't come out and help this guy? Yeah, and I think that this didn't get as much media attention like with the Johnny Depp thing because like everybody knew he was guilty. 
Yeah, true. Everybody knew he was guilty. Even the like letters to the court weren't, we know he's innocent. It was, it's been pretty much past the statute of limitations or something or close to it. Like, well, the, le- go all the easy letters on him. So- I read the four letters, the one that Mila, the one that Ashton released, well, the judge released, and then the one that Kurt uh, Redwood, I think that's his name, the one who plays uh, Red on uh, That 70s Show, and the one who plays Kitty, Deborah Rowe. Deborah Ann Rupp. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I read all of them, and they all basically said, we know they raped, the. he raped them, we know we can never take back what he's done, but he has a daughter. Like okay. I don't care if you have a daughter. If you rape someone, you should go to jail. I like the fact that these 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 people who have prided themselves to be, mm-hmm. hey, we're gonna try and get people out of this type of situation. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis are big proponents of trying to make sure that people are out of the sex slave trade, children as well. And then they come out and endorse someone to not go to jail for doing what they try to stop other people from doing. It bothers me. It bothers me to the point where I'm like, I, I, I know you just said about Drew Barrymore that people make mistakes. We're all infallible. Well, there's a difference between, hey, I'm going to bring my talk show back and, hey, I sexually assaulted somebody. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the letters. I'm talking about oh. the letters. I'm not talking, this is not a Danny Matherson story because I could care two shits about that guy. He fucked himself over. He fucked people and he should go to jail for 30 years. And in my opinion, they should go longer. My issue is Mila and Ashton and Kurt and Deborah writing these letters to the judge to say, this person does not belong in jail. I'm sorry. I have a hard time now watching anything with Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis, or these the other two, if they're in the show, because now I'm seeing them as people who support people who literally raped people who were charged with being a rapist. There's my rant for the day. I apologize. He's their friend. I no 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 no. I'm just I'm I'm not justifying it. Oh, I'm just saying the reason. And the reason that Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis can justify it, because they're not denying what he did. He's still their friend. And it's some t- and it's hard sometimes to separate that. And that's why they wrote the letters. And like I I, 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 I can see why they did it. I also think it's stupid. Jump ship. Just fucking jump ship. Yeah. Do it privately. But also, did they do this privately? And then the judge said, nah, you're not getting away with this and did and released it because of that. Like what, like, this is where it's, because I. Understandable. Understandable. Especially my, since my issue so is, look ago. what happened with, look what happened with Topher Grace. Topher Grace, I, I guarantee it. I will put money on this right now. Topher Grace and the, the, the asshole were probably good acquaintances or friends at one time or another. When the Maybe show the first, first started. Exactly. But but not when once, it ended. But once they started figuring out, once Topher started figuring out how asshole this guy is, he walked away and said, I can't do it anymore. And you're telling me that Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, two people who kind of have a head on their shoulders, saw the exact same things that uh, Topher said, saw and went, we're okay with it. We're so- okay with him being an asshole because I'm I'm his friend. So manipulation and and narcissism and behavior like this affects people differently. Topher Grace and him have a falling out, and so much so that Topher Grace chooses to leave the show. Is that why he actually left? Yeah, they had a he had, there was issues on set. He wanted to go pursue other projects. There was a lot of concerns. That's why he left. So everyone else isn't seeing what Topher's seeing or isn't experiencing the person the way Topher is. Danny Masterson is gaslighting, gatekeeping, girl bossing the other folks. So they have now decades long friendship with someone that they don't know this about. It's, and then it all comes out and they're not denying it. They're not even saying he didn't, but they're like, that's still my friend. I don't know what to do. It's a shitty situation. And I'm not defending Mila Kunis and I'm not defending Ashton Kutcher because I, I do think they do good work. I think that this was fucking stupid. Like don't defend him, but like, also, when you see the entirety of the cast, except for Topher Grace, either verbally say it on the, on Laura, Beyonce's internet. 
I think Laura Prepperon as well didn't say it. Hold on. I got to see. I think I saw her say something. I think they were saying something about they were both Scientologists and then he, she left, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. Um, oh, because she was a Scientologist. Yeah. Oh, she's never said anything. She just hasn't spoken. So we also don't know what she feels. So like you're seeing the whole cast come out and you're having conflicted feelings and you're like, I, I he's done this. He's gone through trial. He's never going to work again. Maybe don't throw him in jail. I can see where they were going with their minds. Was it the right choice? Wilder no. Vald- Valderma- Valderrama for a second. Like, also there's a problem. A, that's what I was. I found that out during this uh, whole shit show as well. That Demi Lovato used to date him while yeah. they were like 13 years apart. She yeah. was a teenager. Uh, I think she was legal of legal age. Granted, that does not necessarily yeah, make legal grooming age, okay. Legal in the States is like 16 in some states. Uh, so it's 18. Not in all. Uh, some of them at 17. Yeah. Oh, dating 17 year old. So. So he dated Mandy Moore when he was 20 and she was 15. Lindsay Lohan when she was 17 and he was 24. And Demi Lovato when she was 17 and he was 29. Yeah, he dates. He's another Leonardo DiCaprio. Got got to be in the teens. Anyway, that show has changed my whole. The, the last month has changed my whole perception on that 70s show because I thought it was a good show. Don't get me wrong. Now I think <laughs> it's a fucking shit show because you go back and watch things from the, like early 2000s. You're like, wow, this is bad. Like, yeah, Friends talk- doesn't hold up. Nothing holds up. The only one that I seem to that seems to hold up, in my opinion, is Frasier, and that's just because, well, I like Frasier. <laughs> Don't hold up. No, There's it doesn't. Of, it, it doesn't hold up, but I still like. I'll still watch it because I still find it funny. Because I everyone can relate to Eddie and uh, Martin Crane because everyone wants to be a crotchety old man with a Jack Russell Terrier who's a homosexual in the closet by <laughs> in real life. <clears throat> I listen. One of my favorite television programs is Ugly Betty. Yeah. Ugly Betty has a lot of issues, a lot of things that don't hold up now. It also was fairly groundbreaking too when it happened. Like having a trans person or a person identifying as trans in a television show, yes, it was played by a cisgender woman. This is a newer conversation that's being had, but one of the only like prime time television shows to be like, this is a trans person and they're a badass bitch and they're not a joke and they're like, in a comedy was groundbreaking. I enjoy the show. I think it's fantastic. Like it's specific conversations surrounding the queer identity and the fashion industry and the magazine industry and, you know, folks of color. It's, it was very groundbreaking. It doesn't really hold up now. And I'm probably the first to admit it. There's a lot of jokes that wouldn't fly today. There's a lot of like commentary. That's maybe not the best idea. Um, But like, at the time, it was groundbreaking. Yeah. Another oh. show that was affected by the writer's strike. Like, go back to the early 60s and 70s. All those shows don't even, like, hold no. a candle to what we're dealing with now in the real world. But here we are. Um, so I, I want to, I just realized we're almost at the hour mark. Wow. And I know. We've literally only talked about four things. <laughs> That's because spent- her passion about Taylor Swift exactly we spent 25 minutes on taylor swift alone so i want to talk about something that uh i kind of was shocked about and it happened 23 years ago but finally someone got arrested after 23 years earlier in september and that is the uh shooting death of tupac Shakur, famous rapper in las vegas i want to say it happened i I, no la i think it was la no okay anyway it may have been vegas i don't know so a i'm gonna read the uh associated press article opening here because i want to make sure i get all the details here a self-described gangster who police and prosecutors say masterminded the shooting death of tupac shakur in las vegas in 1996 made his first court appearance earlier in september Dwayne Caffey D. Davis, 60 years old, stood shackled, wearing a dark blue jail uniform and plastic orange stripes. Um, 23 years. 23 years. To, That's wild. 
find a murderer. Uh, I'm shocked that this act, I thought it was going to be a cold case. Uh, I thought so too. I can, I, I, I'll be honest. I, I, I've heard of Tupac Shakur. I know that he's a rapper. I know that there was some beef between him and Biggie Smalls. And I know Snoop Dogg was good friends with Tupac. I don't know the full details because uh, Tupac was not something that I listened to when I was growing up. I was, I grew up in a household that was all about Brooks and Dunn and Alan Jackson and Conway Twitty and all that jazz. So do you, did, did you follow this story a little bit like over the years? Because there was always rumors about, is he alive still? Is he dead? Here's the hologram of him and Snoop Dogg completely high out of his mind uh, performing at Coachella. I think it was, how do you follow the, the Tupac Shakur sort of storyline over the last 23 years when you so, were one when he died? Tupac Shakur died when I was three years old. I hate you so much. Right. Um, so I knew he died, obviously. And it's like one of the biggest things that, that's like one of the biggest things in music was Tupac dying. And it's constantly joked about him being alive, not alive, like, so I Him knew and Elvis existed. are on an island somewhere with yeah. JFK. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would I say I have followed this? No. Uh, I didn't really know much about Tupac. I mean, his, he's got some really well-known songs. Don't ask me to name them. I wasn't really alive when he was making music. Um, no shade. No shade. No shame. Shade. Nothing. Um, when his stuff comes on and I, it's good, I'm just shocked that after 23 years we found somebody. I would have sworn it, they were going to get away with it. We weren't going to find out until like the person was on their deathbed and was like, "I shot Tupac." Like the whole Watergate thing, Mark Foley coming out at the end before he dies and says, "Hey, I was deep throat during the." Uh, Watergate scandal and then like a month later he dies because he wanted to have a clean conscience uh, I think more similar to uh, Leo Frank and the killing of Mary Fagan in Georgia oh, yeah okay I didn't know that like, that was yeah on his now. deathbed but, but you, you know what I mean right you're on your deathbed and you, you want to atone for all your sins that you've yeah. ever done so that way you can go to those pearly gates and find your 72 virgin computer nerds playing on their computers sure uh I, I I'm in the same boat uh so we're like I said we're at the hour mark we're okay. literally an hour into this but I want to ask what no we're not to... yeah we started we started minutes. We we're like at... 50 minutes, 40 minutes. We're thriving. We're thriving. <laughs> we're thriving. You're only you're only thriving because you want to talk about a certain album that was dropped earlier this month. We and gotta no... talk about Olivia Rodrigo's guts, okay. baby. I, I was gonna say it's not the other one who died and the album, but with the weekend has not come out since January 2021. Yeah, Aaliyah. Aaliyah. I was gonna album. say Ashante, but I was like, that's not her name. I think it's Aaliyah. I think that they re read the writing on the wall that like maybe this wasn't it. So anyway, I leave, uh, Olivia Rodrigo uh, Rodriguez came out. Rodrigo. With, uh, Rodrigo came out with an album called Guts. I have not listened to it. Michael, take it, take it away. It's pretty good. No, it's a good album. And she's one that I think you could see rise up to like a Taylor Swift level Please of no. fame and popularity. She's Please writing... No. She, she's writing good music. She's writing catchy songs. She's doing a lot of her own writing, which is very rare. Beyonce don't write her own stuff. But 37 you know, she, people write Beyonce stuff. But she um, gets written or written by credits. Okay, yeah, because she puts one sentence and you get a, a written credit. Like, yeah. Um, like, I think you could see her, and I've said this, when her first album came out, I said, this is either going to be a one album wonder and her second album is going to be terrible. Or if she can continue to pump out good albums, she could become Taylor Swift. And I said that when I was at her concert and this woman my age whipped around and said, she will never be Taylor. And I was like, hold on. In this audience, these fans are screaming and carrying on just like Taylor Swift is. And they are all 10 years old, which we were all when Taylor Swift came out. All her fans were that age. Like, if they keep propelling her forward, like, 
these 10 year old girls were screaming like they'd been hurt and broken and never going to fall in love again by these men. And I'm like, who hurt you, little 12 year old girl? Who hurt you? What bisexual man hurt you this time? What bisexual hurt you, baby? Um, what What about him? Has he released anything since that ill fave? Yeah, it's all it? terrible. Okay. It's but. all terrible. He's not like, his music's fine. But? <laughs> it's not on her level. She is writing bops. Like, you can go through and, like, listen to the albums, and they're just so... They're such a great pop grunge alternative sound. And like, she's very vocal too about who her influences are. And when she gets inspired, and this is where she maybe should not have opened her mouth. She's like, this song inspired me. And then I'm going to give this person writer's credit. And then they took like all her money. So she's like, hold on a second. Wasn't like, that Taylor Swift? No. I thought it was oh, she, Taylor yes. Swift. Yes, Taylor Swift was one of them. Yes. And so was Haley Williams from Paramore. Because she got sued because they had to put a writing credit on one of the songs for Taylor Swift because, and now she owes like Taylor Swift every time she plays it and all that shit. I'm like, holy fucking Christ. Yeah, ta- and this- she was a huge fan of Taylor Swift and Taylor Swift doing this. She's now gone in interviews and she's like, yeah, uh, Taylor's cool, all right, I guess. Like, she used to be like, oh my God, I love Taylor Swift. She's so fabulous. She's inspired me. Now she's like, oh yeah, Taylor exists. Well, when you get fucked over in the industry, right? Yeah. And that's the thing. She was fully vocal. Like, hey, these are what inspired me. And if they sound kind of similar, it's not like, because you can do a certain percentage of Beyonce just did it with her new album. You sample a little bit of a song and you can get away with it. That's like, there's, I think it's like up to 10, 15% you're fine to use. And she did something within the reason, but like Taylor Swift was like, oh, those chords in that progression um, that was me. And it's like, baby, every single fucking song from like the 80s and 90s uses the same four chords. Maybe let's calm down a little. You don't own chords in a row. Yeah, well, she's fucking trademarked almost everything in the sun right now. But welcome to yeah. the Eras episode of No Not Them. This is my Taylor Swift era. I'm now in my Olivia Rodrigo era. Um, actually, in September... One of my two of my like best friends were in a Taylor Swift era's cabaret singing Taylor Swift songs. My ass had to go there. And you know how many of those songs I knew? Three of them. Three. I'm just trying to think of which shake it off. Yes. Um, um Romeo and Juliet. No, they didn't play it. Uh call me me. No, that's Carly That's Ray Carly Ray Jepsen. Um I don't, I, literally the only song I can think of is uh, Shake It Off. Cruel Summer. No. And then I knew of All Too Well. Also, like, all of Taylor Swift's songs are 10 minutes long. I don't understand why this All Too Well 10-minute version. Uh, ma'am, they're all 10 minutes long. I sat in that cabaret. Every single song was 10 minutes long. Speaking of someone else who has made kind of your October better once it comes out, Mrs. Britney Spears has her book coming out. Now, I know you you talked about it last month and I made a joke and I kind of got called out for it at an event that I was just recently. You did? What did you say? Hold on, hold on. T. Only T. So I, they said that I shouldn't be coming for people as much as I do. People have the right to express their own feelings and have the right to write their own books like you did. And I said, understandable. But once Britney Spears reads her book, then I'll be able to read it as well. <laughs> Prince Harry didn't read his book and you read that. Yeah, but still, I read it after he read it. <laughs> so once it comes out, then I'll wait a week and then I'll buy the book. Because that would give enough time for Britney Spears to read it. I'm and so anyway, excited for Britney For the people book. at the conference, I, I apologize. I need to say this right here, right now. Now, I know five of you came up to me and said, yes, Chris, you do talk a lot on the show. And yes, Chris, you do have a lot of opinions. And yes, Chris, you are very negative when it comes to the entertainment industry. Why do you do this show? Um, because I enjoy it. <laughs> anyway, because of me! Exactly. That plus at the end of the day. I just enjoy uh, talking to Michael, but also I like to be the devil over the angel, uh, devil in the, the devil and Does angel that mean combo. I'm the angel? Yes, you are. When it comes to that, well, not this episode. This episode, it seems like <laughs> I'm episode, being... you're the nice one and I'm the mean one. 
Exactly. I'm just coming for Miss Swift. The Swifties are going to be out in force, canceling me. Um, I'm sorry. I listen. She is a brilliant songwriter. Just <laughs> so not for I, me. As I was about to end my statement. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You continue. You continue. Um, I want to thank everyone who's actually been listening because uh, we. it's always great when people walk up to me and say, hey, why do you guys sound like you're an old married bicker couple? Well, because we basically are, except with the with <laughs> he's married to some other man. I'm married to some other man. We're just good friends. So thank you so much for those who are tuning in. And now you can go about, about how much you love Britney Spears and how much this book is going to change your life and how it's going to be the Bible for the gays and how... No. Taylor Swift and Britney Spears need to do a joint collaboration on Ew. Oops, Hit Me Again and Shake It Off. Um, No, the Bible for the gays is the Diva Code by Miss Piggy. First of all. Never heard right. of it. It's great. It's unhinged. But it's Muppets. It's funny. Oh. Um, also, we are Statler and Waldorf. Speaking of Muppets. Okay. You're making this show a lot longer than it needs to be. But I'm, I'm sorry. Remember I'm when sorry. We used to start, when we used to do these and they were like For four three hours. hours <laughs> and people were like attentively watching with popcorn. They'd nestle in, like into the couch, like, oh, look, this one's four hours long. Short one. I wonder if they had much to talk about. Um, now it's like, oh, we do it under an hour. It's like, we yes. got to get back to that. We got to get back to a four hour, like nestle in well, with, a, with a wine. Oscars, that'll be the Oscar one. Correct. Um, where, oh, oh. Movies, so was, Oscars. Oh, hold on, to Fuck, hold on, to I'm, I'm sorry. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I'm unhinged. Remember, I'm unhinged. So you're talking about Worst Ward off, war, whatever the fucking Statler. Or... <laughs> so I was at a con- I was at the Alberta Municipalities Conference recently, and people kept on coming up to me and saying, "Wow, you're gray, like more gray than I thought you would be." <laughs> You son of a bitches. For those who are listening who told me I'm old, fuck you, okay? It takes a lot for me to get out of bed these days. Like, that old man in that commercial who needs the help, I fall and I can't get up button because I feel old. And then I looked in the mirror when I went to the washroom. I am old. I am that old man on the block. People just make fun of me. I'm old, Gandalf. I feel it in my bones. I'm Gandalf the Grey, <laughs> not Gandalf the White. I'm so white. Okay, anyway, hey, come on, midlife crisis. Let's get sick, man. Go on, talk about whatever you were talking about. Movies. We're talking about movies. movies. What'd you see this month? What'd you what watch? Did What'd I you do? What did I see this month? I actually, oh, we saw the new Golden movie. The what? The Golden My Ear movie with Helen Mirren. Is it good? I liked it. My husband liked it. There's been a bit of controversy because she's not Jewish playing a Jewish uh, prime minister during the Yom Kippur, Kippur War. So we watched that. Uh, I watched The Incredibles 2 for the first time ever because for I'm some reason it was showing up on my uh, Instagram feed from randomly like those like quick snippets. I was like, I've never seen this. So I'll watch it. I watched it. I liked it. Uh, what else have I seen? What else have I seen? What else have I seen? We watched the bar movie, but that was last month. That was August. I didn't like it. Uh, I'm going to be Alan for Halloween and Jonathan's going to be Ken. But I'm trying to decide which Ken Jonathan's going to be. He needs to either be the I am Ken enough because it's easy or Sugar's Daddy Ken, or Magic Earring Ken. Stop, stop, stop. It's everybody's being Barbie and Ken this year. Not me, because I'm older than 10. Okay, and? Nothing, just saying. I am a child. Uh, I'm just trying to think what other movies came out this month in September because I did watch a few. I just don't remember what they were. Oh, um, we saw the No Hard Feelings. Oh. I don't know her. Jennifer Lawrence hit her. Oh, was it tragic? It was horrible. So was it getting nominated? No. Are she, you sure it, about that? Yeah, no, it, it's not one of the, it's not a, dra- dra- uh, it's a comedy and it's not a uh, drama, so she didn't do well in it. 
Uh, do, 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 do. I'm just trying to see. Gardens of the Galaxy 3 we watched. Oh, I need to watch that one still. No. I also need to watch The New Little Mermaid. That's the plan for the weekend. Yes, that's my plan this weekend, too, because I've heard only good things about it, but mm-hmm. I've heard bad things as well. So it's one of those hit and miss. So I will watch that. Uh, continue talking. What else did you get up to? What books did you read this month? Or did you read mm-hmm. any books this month? I read the book. I read the book, How to Murder Your Employer by Rupert Holmes. Welcome to the No Not Them <laughs> conversational hour. What's Welcome to my that? alibi. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was um, recording this on this date. This is I, this date. I um I did I went and saw the nun too. I loved it. It was much better than the first one. Okay. I like the conjuring movies. I know they get shit, but like whatever. No, I I think I yeah, you know. <laughs> um <laughs> I went and saw The Haunting in Venice, the new Hercule Poirot movie. All the champagne in the world. No, there was not enough champagne to feel the now. It actually was really good. I will was say it? Tina Fey can't act, but whatever. We done new. Well, um, she can. She just can't act. She can't do it. dramas. She's a, she's all right at comedies, and she should stick to that. But it was pretty good. I was Especially after the last one, there was only up. Only I think you might see it get, get nominated for a couple of things. Just like the Knives Out. I think it'll be like a cinematography or maybe like an adapted screenplay situation. But like, Kenneth We're Branagh had- needs to calm down. Oh, and we saw the new Indiana Jones movie. Oh. Not good, only, I figured. Only thing that I was happy about is they killed uh, What's-His-Face's uh, Indiana Jones? No, they killed um, the son. What's his name? Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, his character from the fourth movie. So bye, bye, Shia LaBeouf. Mm-hmm. Um, this is usually the month where we start seeing Oscar contenders start coming out, don't we? Yeah, there's a ton of them that have been popping up in theaters. That I'm like, do I have the patience for this, or do, or do I just want to wait for when I'm done with theater and just start trying to catch things, or do I just wait for what happens with the Golden Globes and start working my way down the list when the Golden Globes come out? Because that's always a good indicator of what we can see. Yeah, which we should be hearing shortly, shouldn't we be? Globes? No. Globes usually come out in November because they're usually the first week of January, don't they? Yeah. November. Golden Globes. Um, Not Golden Glove, Michael. Golden Globes. 24. Nominations, 24. Um. They announced two new categories. Uh oh, what categories now? Um, they announced best stand-up comedian on television and box office achievement in motion pictures. Okay. So, movies that broke the box office. Okay, so that should be fun. Um, December 11th, they're announcing for the Golden Globes. Okay, that's what I thought. It's usually the last, like, I knew it was in November sometime, but... December 11th? So what? I said December 11th, and you said you knew they were in November. I I said, I, I know they're usually near the end of December or beginning of December, end of November, beginning of December. Gotcha, gotcha, and gotcha. then you interrupted me like you usually do. So I can't get a word out anyway. If we're harking back to our three hour conversations, we need to start. I need to start throwing shade at you 24 seven. OK, no, because then you get hate mail. Yeah, I haven't got any in a while. I just get the because we keep it under an hour. You, you're really angry a lot, Chris. What's wrong? What's going on? Well, you know what? I'm trying to be nice in this episode, okay? This is the nice episode. Michael's the unhinged Taylor Swift fan, and I'm the nice Do not. One. Do <laughs> not call me that. Well, that's Unhinged, the, that's, sure. That's the title of the episode. Michael Nichols Pate, the unhinged Taylor Swift fan. I'm going to veto that. I'm going to use my one veto. Okay, that'll be called the Michael Nichols Unhinged Hour. That's fine. Uh, so what else are you up to for the next month? 
we have Halloween coming up. We have uh, real Canadian Thanksgiving uh, this weekend. Uh, we have the fake ass American Thanksgiving next month in November. But what else are you doing? Because I know you have Columbus Day because you guys like to celebrate people discovering things because, you know, you guys have not done it. What? <laughs> you can't discover land people are already on, but I mean, pop off Columbus. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge that we're on Treaty 7 territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy here in Calgary that we're being recorded on. But anyway, uh, what else are you up to? Got any big plans? I know your hubby is out of town this weekend. Jonathan's going to Cali this weekend, and I'm directing two shows between now and and October 29th is the last show's last performance. And then I will be a free bird until I maybe, maybe not get cast uh, during an audition in January, end of January. Are so I'm going to have three months. Off. Are we anticipating some uh, more Lights of Broadway reviews coming up? Yeah, right now we're trying to figure out the logistics between going to New York for my birthday week again. Um we like to want to remember those that's December 2nd, 2000 every year, December 1st. I mean, I knew that I should remember that because it's usually the year that, <laughs> for the last three years I've had surgeries on that day. <laughs> you really have. It's like, happy birthday, Michael. Chris is in surgery. <laughs> yeah. Yay. And then he gets an update from my husband about five days later going, he's okay. He's not dead. <laughs> Uh, if it's an update from him, sometimes it's you like 20 days later being like, hi, I'm here. And I'm like, oh, wonderful <laughs> to hear from you, sir. Happy Christmas. I'm alive. Happy, happy <laughs> holiday to you. Um, uh, okay. So you got your, you're planning a big trip to yes. good old New York, New York this year again. Yeah. We're looking at going to New York for Black Friday again for like December 3rd. Um, we're trying to work it out with our friend um, to use the apartment again it's just easier than paying for a hotel um and there's a lot of shit we want to see but there's also not as much coming out right now so it's like we've made the list of everything we want to see and there's only like we have enough slots to do 14 shows and there's only i think like nine or ten that we were we wrote down as we went down the list so we were like oh a lot of the stuff's going to be coming out in the january to springtime so springtime in Germany. But spam a lot. We are trying to go see. I'm sorry. I, I'm, just, I'm just I'm just trying to make you feel welcomed in the show by interrupting you like every time I talk. <laughs> I'm easily excitable and I apologize for that. You heard it here first. He actually apologized for something, ladies. <laughs> just ladies. Well, that's all that approached me. <laughs> people said that i'm the worst i love that no they said you're the you're the more level-headed one that was the exact quote they used level-headed and i went oh that doesn't mean much in the world of Ooh. us because <laughs> well when you put your you up against me anyone's fucking level-headed <laughs> mazel mazel tov is right uh for me what's going on this month what are you pointing at me? I was just about to say, what are you doing this month? But you said it before uh, I said it. Uh, I have real Thanksgiving this weekend. I have friends coming over. So, well, friends, family. You know those friends that are kind of like family? Like they're more family because you live in a random community that you have no immediate family within 3,000 kilometers and it's wonderful. Love you, mom and dad. Um, but real thanksgivings this weekend so we have family we have family coming in uh the new rick riordan book came out Childs of god so i've been diving into that it's actually taking me a lot longer to read it because i've been quite busy i was just at a conference i'm heading up to a conference uh next week for two days in edmonton then a week later we're off to newfoundland and labrador to go uh, halfway across the, well, literally the other side of the country to go to a conference there. And then when I get back, I have to attend another conference in Edmonton. And then uh, in no beginning of uh, November, after I get back from my last conference, I'm going to be starting uh, one round of treatments again. So there's my schedule. Busy. Oh, 
And I've got some movies I want to watch and TV shows. Hopefully I'll be able to catch up on because I want to watch the last episode of Only Murders in the Building season three because season it just uh, was announced this morning that it was picked up for season four. So I'm extremely excited about that. And so everyone who's not listening, everyone who's not watching this right now, you can tell the moment when Michael starts tuning me out, when he starts playing with his hat and he starts looking around and trying to figure out how does he get out of this interview as quickly as possible. No, that's not so, what's going on. I'm just easy. I'm or, easily distracted. Or, or usually you can tell when he's really upset because I've just called him out on something is when his voice starts to go high. <laughs> I'm feeling very attacked. There we go. Now we're good. <laughs> I'm feeling very attacked. No, it's I'm listening. I'm, I my hands. I like need one of those fidget things. What are they? The, the like buttons you push or the I need one of those because like I can't sit and like I'm not picking up my phone. I'm like just like fiddling with like my fingers need to dance. I was what? Oh, I just want to make sure you heard yourself there because you you uh uh I think it's thou shall protest too much, thou lady thou Oh protest. my god. I'm, I'm I've had it officially. <laughs> officially, ladies and gentlemen, he's had it because his voice is high, and you know what that means. Michael, it's, it's always uh, a pleasure to sit down. It's hot in there. Maybe it's uh, a it's menopause. 85 degree, no, it's 85 degrees in New York today. Why is it so hot? I don't friggin' know. I don't know. We had to turn our furnace off. It's like minus four, the minus two here right now. It's snowing in Alberta. Thank God. I'm so excited. Bring it's on the snow. snow. Oh, that means the Christmas show is coming back. Oh, oh, okay, okay. For those who are not watching this from the Discovery Channel, please, please, for the love of God, tune in for this, like, literally this two-minute rant here for a second. Okay, now, I've been patiently waiting, patiently waiting, literally patiently waiting for this entire last five months to find out if the holiday Christmas championship is coming back for season 11 now you have not announced anything you have not said anything the hosts of the show have not said anything now i apologize right here for someone who gets little joy in this world these days please for the love of god give me some silver lining where you can just say hey we're coming back for season 11 of holiday baking championship with duff and marla and whatever the old woman is called because i forget her name right now nancy I, nancy i need it i need it i need it it is my holiday tradition i wake up monday morning at five o'clock to watch it on discovery plus because that's what brings me joy if you take this away from me and I die before season 11 shows up, it's on you, Discovery Plus. There's my end of my rant. Wild. Sorry, I need it. I need Jesse Palmer in my life, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> you and my husband both. Football. Oh, I can Is see he a football shows. man? Yeah, he played. He's Canadian, too. Oh, God. <laughs> yes <laughs> anyway uh, as always this has been Michael Nichols and Chris Brown and though they're not the two people you're thinking about right now and this is not how I usually end this show but I, I never do a good ending I actually did a good ending last time but I can't do a never, I can never do a good ending Michael Nichols always a pleasure Chris Brown thank you so much no problem Mike Oh, always greatly appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for. <laughs> you know what? You're just popping off. So pop off, sis. Well, this has been another episode of No, Not Them. No, not them. No, not me. No, not. No, no not, not them. them. <laughs> Until November, maybe November 1st, maybe November 12th, maybe November 8th. Y'all get oh, it no. when y'all get it. Exactly. You come for us. Come for us in the show notes. Anyway, have yourself an excellent day. Until then. This has been No, Not Them.